Hello, hello, hello. How are we all doing pre-show? Four minutes and 15 hello, seconds. Hello. How are we all doing pre-show? That's me speaking to myself, by the way. <laughs> feedback. Martina, hi. Vixen Designs. Hello, hello, hello. Caro Bell. <laughs> Two Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Tickets in your car. <laughs> oh, Caro Bell. My goodness. You and your jokes. Joe Salmi is there. Hey. Nice to see you. <laughs> Rovigo 55. Daft Cat Brewing. Afternoon from sunny Wales. Yes, it's sunny here on the Isle of Wight today. Very nice. Super hot. I'm going to keep the studio door open again today. Oh, Powerball sounds good, Caddo. Yes, I like the sound of that. I've used many of those uh, sort of palm-held uh, audio editing devices. Uh, I quite like um, Pallet Gear. They make some good stuff, but it's not really like in-your-hand editing stuff. But to be honest, I, I still prefer the Magic Mouse on Apple. Nico Billy, hi from Germany. Nice to have some time to watch again. Nice to have you here, Nico. Don LeBlanc, not to worry until you answer yourself. <laughs> I'm going mad. Nugster, hello from Canada. Nice to see you there. Announce yourself. What are we up to? Uh, what are we working on today? Post in the comments now. Let me know what you're working on today. What project, what creative stuff have you got on the boil today? Anything interesting? Anything nice? I've been creating more videos for Mike Russell VIP, uh, which is my premium YouTube channel. It's a monthly subscription, and you can get that at mrc.fm slash VIP. mrc.fm slash VIP. Doing a daily video over there. Mike's Minute in Adobe Audition. So come and join me if you want to find some way of supporting the show. If you're not already subscribed over there, that's a perfect way to do it and get some value too. Beta Media, hi. Just been tasked with good-looking IT department newsletter before Friday. Whoa! Nice work. Rovigo55 is going to be cleaning the big mess in his house later. Darth Cat Brewing. It's when you lose an argument with yourself you have to worry. <laughs> PB The Vlogs, hi from Melbourne, Australia. G'day. How you going? Mark Bellinger. Working on Steam Hammer VR. Ooh, virtual reality. Yeah, I've tried that. I haven't got my own device yet, but I'm loving VR. Hi, David from Adelaide, Australia. Great to see you there. Thanks for interacting in the community, by the way, in the last 24 hours. Dizzy, hi from Serbia. Peter Dirks, hello from the Netherlands. Hello to you too. Been making beer fault videos, teaching brewers how to fix or avoid making bad beer. Sounds like I need to watch your channel. Isabella's in the house, woo! Bojan's in from Croatia. Peter Young's in. Nice to have you there. Countdown starting now. Here we go. It is really exciting, as always, to be with you. I am Mike Russell from Music Radio Creative. Hang on, hang on, hang on a second. Uh, can I do it? Can I do the, the, the funky thing here? I think I can. Yes. Woo. That's my lower third, Mike Russell, musicradiocreative.com. Really, really cool to be with you today. Uh, and thank you for joining in in the chat. If you're chatting away on the live stream right now, uh, first mention of your comments will be in 15 minutes time. We do them every 15 minutes during the show. Uh, so any late arrivals that come in and say, why is he not responding to comments? Why does he ignore 
ignore us. Uh, if you guys, as in you here now, the regulars, are the stronghold of the four, if you could take care of that and just explain to people, yes, he mentions us every 15 minutes because I love you guys there. And also, if you're listening on the podcast, it's great to have you there. I think you're going to get a lot of value from this session. We're talking about how to create a trailer for your YouTube channel. Now, I'm sure all of you know that YouTube is a colossal place to be. I mean, it's one of my favorite places to be. Um, it's definitely where my community uh, is strongest here at Music Radio Creative. I, I love interacting with you in the chat uh, during these live streams and also when I put out content on my channel and uh, it's, it's not live. Also, there's a good interaction in the comments as well. So I just enjoy being there. The world's second biggest search engine. It is video. It's live. It's, it's kind of personal because it's, well, it's, it's you and it's me. It's, it's you and me just sitting down having a conversation, although I'm making rather a little bit too much eye contact with you today. Don't you think I should probably look elsewhere? Otherwise, you'll think I'm a bit stalkerish. So, <laughs> yeah, getting the trailer right for your YouTube channel, I can't stress how important that is. Uh, now, I've had many trailers uh, in, in my time on YouTube since they invented trailers. And really, it's a trailer that positions your YouTube channel. Just the same as with podcasting, uh, come the fall, come the autumn time, when iOS 11 comes out from Apple, they've introduced something called podcast trailers. It will be amazingly important to get those podcast trailers sounding good, sounding great, and just generally giving a good preview of what's to come in your show. So I figured that I needed to update my YouTube trailer uh, and make it sound and look good, seeing as this is an audio channel. And particularly as um, the last trailer I filmed, I actually created up at the YouTube space in, in London, which is a fantastic facility uh, in King's Cross in London. They have them all over the globe, by the way, if you're a YouTube producer, New York, San Francisco. I think there's one in Berlin, another one in Paris, too. Uh, and they're just great people there as well. They're really, really helpful, the team at YouTube. Um, and yeah, I recorded one up there in their in their audio studio and it looked very good um, but unfortunately I didn't set up the mic correctly so I, I had a bit of scratchy audio <laughs> on the trailer and I had a few comments saying you're supposed to be an audio pro but you didn't get the audio right on that one did you so uh, yeah I just thought it was long overdue a change to the trailer so right now I'm going to show you what I've created and then we'll dive into uh, three uh, Adobe Creative Cloud apps uh, today we'll look at Premiere Pro uh, briefly we'll look very deeply at Adobe Audition and we'll also hop over into Photoshop uh, so I can show you uh, a few widgets and effects I did there to make my trailer look good on YouTube before we get started, I would like to say to you, I very much appreciate you joining the community. Yes, the uh, community is a brand new thing and uh, just launched yesterday. Uh, there's the link, mrc.fm slash community. Isabella's even posted it already, mrc.fm slash community. Go and join the community right now. Um, we already have, uh, I think, nearly 50 members in the community, which is amazing given uh, I've only mentioned it on the live stream and it's only been 24 hours since I mentioned it. Uh, so as you can see, lots going on here, lots of people talking away, asking questions about audio production, uh, tips and tricks, uh, things they're coming up against in Adobe Audition, uh, mainly, although I do welcome other door conversation, but uh, it seems to be that you want Adobe Audition, so that's that's cool. Um, and yeah, it's just really, really cool. So if you want to post some threads in there, uh, I'll refresh it maybe uh, during the show and we can, we can talk about what's in there. Uh, but also I'm pleased to tell you that two or three threads I'm going to turn into a topic on my live stream. So if you post something in there uh, and it's a really good question, then uh, why not feature it? Also, another thing I'll show you is if we go to users, you can actually see the users here. There's like a kind of leaderboard of users. And I can see uh, Joe Salmi is at the top. He's number one right now uh, on the Music Radio Creative Board in the last 24 hours, uh, which is amazing. So go on, get yourself up the top there. Uh, and that's all rated on how many hearts you get and uh, just how much you interact with the community, basically. So Joe, big congratulations to you for making the number one spot, uh, even above myself and Isabel as well for interaction. Uh, so that's really cool. mrc.fm slash community, right. Let's do this. So uh, first of all, it's worth to play you the trailer uh, that I made for the YouTube channel. And it's one minute in duration. And I think it just perfectly sums up what you can expect on the channel. So have a watch of this. Hopefully it'll be good enough quality because we are sort of rendering in real time in Premiere Pro. But let's try and play it and see what it sounds like. Hello, I'm Mike from musicradiocreative.com. Would you like to make your voice sound like, like this? Or like this. Maybe like this. Like a robot. Or like a scary dog demon. 
all of this is possible, just hit subscribe right now. Maybe you'd like to make a jingle that sounds like this. Playing the best music live from the top of the tower. 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 It's all possible. Or perhaps a sung jingle that sounds like this. Music Radio Creative. That's possible too. Plus, I go live daily, Monday to Friday, with a live stream all about audio production. Join me, hit subscribe, and click the bell to get every update. There we go, and then a little outro. Uh, obviously, it's it's not rendering quite, quite in real time there, so it's a little bit jerky. I love the fact I've got a mixer now, so I can kind of mix this in and out. And that's usually the outro that I put on the end of every YouTube video I do. It's uh, 20 seconds in duration, and YouTube have a great feature. Uh, I was going to actually show you a little bit of this in the in the back end of YouTube. Uh, you can... Ab- absolutely do really cool stuff like add featured content you can have your trailer as your channel ad as well if you like uh, so that means it gets featured across the YouTube platform which is really cool uh, plus for the last 20 seconds of your video you can sort of feature a subscribe to me button and uh, two videos you should watch or an external link to your website so that last 20 seconds I think is really important so obviously you've seen the video you've seen a little bit about how it looks I had a nice still shot of Adobe Audition in the background and I decided to load all the most colourful features in Audition to make it look really bright and enticing and exciting, particularly for new arrivals to the channel. Um, But getting the audio right, that's important. So let's see what we can do uh, to make audio sound brilliant in our YouTube channel. Uh, Firstly, I've got down here, you can see this track here that's uh, not on mute. That is the audio track. That's the final final produced audio track and this one on mute at the moment if I just uh, solo that for a second this was the original track I started with hello I'm Mike from musicradiocreative.com so that's the original track and then let's listen again now to the uh, newly w- one newly created one hello I'm Mike from musicradiocreative.com so a lot of processing has has occurred there would you like to make your voice sound original and then the new one like, like this and of course we've got or like this Maybe like this, like a robot or like a scary, (laughs) dark demon. So now you can hear how the original sounded before I added the filters that I'm about to show you in Adobe Audition. All of this is possible. Just And when I did the jingle, I, I had to kind of improvise here a little bit because I didn't know what I was going to do to the jingle until I whacked it into Adobe Audition. So as you can see, I made some pregnant pauses to insert sound effects and do silly things with my voice. Top of the tower! It's all possible. It does look rather silly there when I say something and pause. From the top of the tower. It's all possible. But then when you actually hear it in context, it, it does work. And then here I had to pause for what I thought would be a good amount of time to insert an acapella. Like this. And that's where I'm waiting. That's possible. And yeah, so there's there's a load going on here. Now, the best thing about the link between Premiere Pro and Adobe Audition is that although this is all mixed down now as one one track, one, one stem in my sequence, I can actually get back everything that I did previously in Adobe Audition. And the way you do that, if you've previously edited something in Audition, uh, so you've exported it from Premiere Pro over to Audition, you've done loads of stuff in the multi-track, and then you want to get it all back, right-click, and you've got Edit Clip in... An, Audition here in Adobe Audition. If I click that, what it's going to do is just load the clip, one singular clip, which is not what I want. Um, but if I was to make a change, like uh, say, you know, put some silence in here, for instance, if I then zip back into Premiere, boom, that silence is going to immediately refresh, or at least it should do. Or maybe I need to save. Hang on, let's save. Save. And then over here, boom, yeah, there's the silence there. You see it? So anything you do in Audition, it renders out real time back over like that. Um, But if I want to get the multi-track, instead of edit clip in Audition, I want to edit original. When I click edit original, uh, it'll ask me here, uh, do I want to open the Audition multi-track session that created this file uh, or open it in the waveform? Well, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to open the multi-track session. So OK to that. And look at this. It's loading all the original sound effects I did in my files window there. It's got the uh, the acapella in there. It's got the trailer audio extracted. It's got everything. And I also get a nice thing down here, which I might expand a little bit. That is the original video. So when I scrub through, I can see my, my 
uh, face changing there as I say different things. So now let's have a, a dig into this session. As you can see, it's quite an expansive session. Uh, lots of editing going on here. So what have we got and what effects have we got going on? Let's go into the effects rack. So this top track here is just a, a reference for video. You cannot actually do video editing inside Adobe Audition. You have to go back to Premiere Pro for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, for syncing up to video and checking that everything's on and looking good. So if I get to the start of my, my audio there, you should see that my face hopefully changes. Yeah, that's just when I open my mouth and start speaking, as you can see. And uh, when I go to the end of this word, you should see it starting to close again. So I'm just checking the sync here to make sure that I've kind of nicely and let's check it out by playing it as well. Would you like to make your voice sound like this? Now, this is going to have a tough time, I think, playing in real time, because not only am I using CPU to stream, uh, but I'm also using it to render video and audio at the same time. So on this initial track here, uh, what I've done is I've added a few um, effects to make the voice sound better and sound, sound fat and sound good and sound nice. So uh, let's listen to it while we take off some of the effects. So, uh, right, let's have a listen to this. Now, I'm, Hello, wondering, I'm, Mike. I'm wondering if it's worth deleting the video from this session because that's going to slow us down. I wonder if I can do that. That might then speed things up a little bit. Uh, wait for that bouncing beach ball to disappear on the Mac. Hopefully that's going to speed things up. Although it may well crash everything. <laughs> I'll start again from scratch. There we go, it's gone. Now, is this going to render faster? Hello, I might. It's marginally faster. So we'll go without the video down there because we're focusing on audio right now. So um, when I start taking effects off this channel, like the parametric EQ. Hello, I'm Mike from musicradiocreative.com. Now, I don't know if you can hear that on the stream or on the uh, podcast replay, but it's definitely lost a lot of its sparkle. So what have I done here? Well, I've uh, topped up on the highs and added some mids and then started rolling off a little bit of bass. Only marginal, um, but these are the kind of effects that are actually included in my Adobe Audition presets that you can buy at mrc.fm slash presets. Uh, so, yeah, rolling on the nice high frequencies, taking away bass. Hello, I'm Mike from Music Radio Creative. Sounds good. Take it off and take the hard limiter off and we end up with something like this. Hello, I'm Mike from musicradiocreative.com. So as you can hear, starting to go a lot flatter. Take the speech volume leveler off. Hello, I'm Mike from musicradiocreative.com. And I go rather much quieter, as you can hear. Now there's and the dynamics processing. This will Hello, I'm Mike from musicradiocreative.com. Scientific filter, what's going on here? I'm rolling off 100, bass rumble. That's a typical 100 curve there, just taking that off. Or sorry, the other way it should be. 100 curve like that. So, hello, I'm Mike from Music Radio Creative. And finally, the de esser is, is like a magic touch. So, add those all back on, and we get hello, I'm Mike from Music Radio Creative. A really super sweet sound. So, that's the uh, initial audio track that I was working on to the video. And uh, as you will see in the final product, it does seem to sync rather well uh, to my face. Hello, I'm Mike from musicradiocreative.com. In a way, it kind of looks a little unnatural because I'm speaking on the screen with such a compressed voice. Uh, but then because this is an audio channel, I can kind of get away with, with doing that. Whereas if you, I think if you processed your voice that much on a trailer and you were like uh, a gaming channel or you were like, I don't know, a, a serious news channel or something, it might be a little bit much. So maybe if you're processing your voice, you might want to forgo, uh, for instance, dynamics processing. You might want to uh, roll the speech volume leveler down a little bit uh, so it's not leveling so much or so the target volume level uh, isn't on such, such a, a high setting. Uh, and then you get a more natural sound, but you can still leave things like parametric equalizer in. Uh, and even if you wanted, you could go a step further uh, and go into the graphic equalizer 20 band and add what I call a little mic sparkle here to these frequencies, uh, these sort of high to mid range frequencies. Let's have a listen. Hello, I'm Mike from Music Radio. Yeah, that's that's bringing out the crispness in the voice. Hello, I'm Mike from Music Radio Create. Take that off. Hello, I'm Mike from. You hear how it's really sparkling up the voice? Hello, I'm Mike from Music Radio. And then maybe we could afford to drop dynamics processing. Hello, I'm Mike from. Even let's mess about with the speech volume leveler here and see what we can do. Hello, I'm Mike from musicradiocreative.com. Would you? 
Let's take this down. Hello, I'm Mike from MusicRadioCreative.com. Would you like to make your voice sound? Hello, I'm Mike from MusicRadioCreative.com. Would you? Hello, I'm Mike from MusicRadioCreative.com. So we're getting a, a, a slightly different sound there, but the main thing is to get the sound that's right for you. It's 15 minutes into the show. Uh, before I get on and show you all the funky audio effects I added to my voice during this YouTube trailer, let's take a look at what you've been saying uh, over on the, the live chat. If you happen to be in the live stream right now, always appreciate your comments at youtube.com slash music radio creative. Uh, you can also do it over at Facebook Live as well. And I'm pleased to see you over on Twitch and Periscope, uh, which is an exciting place to be too. So what have we got here uh, since the start of the show? Uh, it's been nice to see Nico here uh, saying uh, your VIP channel isn't available in Germany, uh, if I see correctly. Don't know if it's supported by YouTube for Germany anyway. Oh, that's sad, Nico. I do know that, um, yeah, the, the YouTube subscription channels, they only work in some countries at the moment. Um, there's a fair range, like UK, US, Australia, Canada, I think some parts of South America, other parts of Europe, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, you might be right about that, it's a shame. But mrc.fm slash VIP, that's the place that I'm creating new content daily now for VIP subscribers. It's Mike's Minute in Adobe Audition. If you can subscribe, I'd appreciate it, and I think uh, you'll enjoy it. Hi to Michael Duffy from Warwick in Rhode Island. Nice to see you there again. Um, Duff Cat Brewing, good luck to Isabella. Uh, David Lewis is in. Hey, David, good to see you there. Thanks for interacting into the community, and woohoo, I can see it. It's just over there. Lee Johnson. Lee, thank you very much for a wonderful super chat just in right now. Uh, always a good way to support the show. Thanks for all the audible uh, YouTube advice, Mike. Lee, it's my pleasure and really, really grateful for that super chat. Uh, really very kind of you indeed. Thank you for that. Uh, what else have we got in here? Uh, we got Caddo Bell with the, uh, he's enjoying the reverb. Yes, I can do things like that with this uh, uh, wonderful Soundcraft mixing desk, which I'm talking about in the community forums, by the way. It is fantastic. Fantastic. I can sound like an old-time radio host or um, actually another tutorial that I've got coming up on the VIP channel is how to create gated reverb and gated reverb sounds a little bit like this. You hear this in a lot of pop songs. Gated reverb, very nice indeed. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Joe <laughs> needs needs that reverb trail, absolutely. Uh, plus one for a comment like button. That would be good to have that on YouTube, wouldn't it? Uh, what else have we got here? Simon RDF, hello from Berlin, Germany. Uh, Vixen Designs, uh, hello there from Suriname. Wow, where is that in the world? Uh, a link to the community. Yes, of course, I can, I can share the community with you. Uh, let me just go to my screen share here and show you. It's over here, and it's... Um, well, let me copy and paste this. Uh, mrc.fm slash community is the short link if you want to hop over there. Uh, and you can see, uh, I can see Caddo's been in there uh, posting about today's session in the community. Thank you, Caddo. Really appreciate that. Caddo is known actually as the, the tone arranger in the community. And uh, it's always nice to have helpful members of the community. So if you join and post and interact, I appreciate that. Another new topic here, learning good microphone technique. Uh, Darth Cat Brewing has posted that. So do start posting threads over at mrc.fm slash community during the show. And I always do like to, to hop off this live stream and get in and respond to anyone who's been chatting in the community. So if you've got a, a kind of deep dive question that we can't necessarily cover on the show, um, then the community is a great place to post it. Gameplay Magic. Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks for posting. Uh, Taylor's in there from Cincinnati in the USA. Anuj J has joined in on Periscope. And we've got Rich Brennan. Is it possible to change a male's voice to a female type sound? Ooh, well, maybe. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I suppose you're talking about an effect there, aren't you? Um, that's a good one to post in the community. Go and get that in the community and uh, I'll try and chip in. And I know others will, will help with that as well because we do have a lot of Adobe Audition pros uh, sitting there in the community. Uh, loving the trailer, says Darth Cat. Uh, it was great. Walter Carter, love it, Mike. Uh, Got to make one myself. Abdul, yo, what's up? Mark, uh, Pluralize is great for syncing audio. Pluralize. Ooh, really? Interesting. Actually, there is a way you can sync audio to the original in Premiere Pro. Let me see if I can remember it now. Um, there is an effect. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I think you have to do something really funky, like create different camera angles and then sync. The, the effect uh, leaves my mind right now, 
but there is a way to do it. Uh, maybe audio channels. Hmm. I've done it before, but it's it's yeah, it's quite good because essentially you can say here's the original audio track and this is my new audio track. Sync those two up, and and it does it. So there is a way to do it in Premiere Pro, but maybe I need to to look that up and refresh my memory. Uh, some of the Premiere Pro effects uh, don't always come straight to the top of my head like Audition. Uh, Isabella is posting about the community there, so thanks for that, Isabella. Anyone who hasn't joined, please join in. Be nice to see you there. Don LeBlanc, I'm going crazy. Mike's mic is still too hot. Uh, oh, really? Hang on, let me just turn it down a little bit like this. Is that is that a little bit better now? Hopefully that's a little bit better. Don and anyone uh, on the live stream, let me know if the microphone sounds better now. I need to pull it down because I've got um, an issue, and I actually I look this up. Because what I do for the live stream, just to give you a bit of a behind the scenes, I run everything into the Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK, uh, which is a 12-channel multi-track uh, mixer, so I can send 12 uh, outputs to my computer. But uh, it's pretty difficult to send the uh, the master stereo mix out, and I uh, that's post everything, so post EQ and post effects on your voice and all of that cool stuff I'm doing. So after a lot of Googling around, I came to the conclusion the easiest thing to do uh, would actually be to, um, because I've got a lot of AUX outputs on here, and I've got a, a master output that goes to, no, I've got a group output that goes to my, my studio monitors, and then I have a master left and master right. These are XLR leads. Um, I won't pull one out because you'll lose a channel. Or maybe I will. Hang on. Let me pull the right-hand side out. You're going to lose the right channel on the stream. Hang on. There we go. You should have lost the right-hand side, and then I can show you. Uh, it's, ooh, look at that. It's an XLR lead. Uh, let me plug it in so you get the right channel back, because I know it's a bit funky without the right channel. <sighs> there we go, back in stereo. Uh, so I send XLR leads over to a audio interface called the Scarlet 2i2. You can see it here in my preferences in Audition, audio channel mapping. I'm actually using the Scarlet for... Um, audio here. So my output is to Scarlet 2i2 uh, for the stream, and that way I can send the stereo master mix out to you guys so I can do anything. I can pan myself from left to right and uh, add on this, or I can add on something like, like this. this. Ooh. And uh, it all goes to you. Uh, without that, if I use the USB connection, for some reason I don't get all those cool effects. It kind of trips each fader uh, pre-effects, which I don't really want. So I use the Scarlet 2i2, but for some reason, and this seems to be a common problem, when you plug in XLR uh, leads and they're not microphones, they run really hot. So I've got the inputs turned right the way down to like nothing on the Scarlet 2i2. And still, if I was to turn this up, sorry about that, it clips, it clips like crazy. Uh, and there's no sort of pad buttons or anything like that on the 2i2, so there's not a lot I can do apart from pull the fader down and up like this on the mixing desk. So that's that's what I'm trying to do, but hopefully that setting is good for you. Uh, thank you to, wow, uh, just as I was talking there, Simon RDF has donated 10 euros uh, via a super chat. Thank you, Simon RDF, for supporting this content. Really appreciate you. Uh, that's very kind indeed. I see Isabella's been in there uh, thanking you as well. I will get back to the comments, but I, I see there's there's plenty of stuff coming up. Uh, just to conclude this, though, Don, yes, I've replaced my old Sapphire, uh, the, the Focusrite uh, Pro 14, uh, which was running on uh, Firewire, and it was, just, it was just tripping out a little bit. Sometimes I'd reboot the PC, uh, uh, PC, Mac. <laughs> I'd reboot the Mac and it just wasn't there. So I, I, I just had no audio and I had to reboot again. But like I said on a previous stream, I've had that Focusrite Pro 14 for about eight years. Uh, so it's about time it broke. <laughs> uh, and this Scarlet 2i2, it was sitting in a cupboard until until last week. And now I'm putting it to very good use. Right, let's have a look at some of these effects now uh, on the uh, on the voice that I've got here. And we can possibly take a look at uh, this one here. So what have we got going on here? Let's have a Make listen. your voice sound like, like this. Or like this. So uh, let's start with, with this one here. Sound like this. So what is that? That's uh, just a simple bit of, uh, well, obviously we've got the parametric equalizer, but this is a simple bit of chorus uh, using the chorus effect. You can access that via... Um, Delay and echo, no. Modulation, chorus, there it is. Uh, delay time up to 50 milliseconds to give it a nice bouncy kind of echo around the ears. Delay rate right down, because if I 
bring it right up, it's going to sound wobbly. Sound like this. Wobbly like an alien, so I brought it right down to make it like a sensible kind sound of... Sound like this. That's nice. And the modulation depth, likewise, uh, very low on that, and the rate down as well. Uh, the spread not going too nuts, 20 milliseconds spread on that, no feedback whatsoever, uh, and everything else pretty much standard. So chorus on the first voice. Um, but this was the voice that most excited me. I thought, now if I'm going to make a trailer for my YouTube channel, I really need to make uh, an effect that people go, wow, how on earth did he do that? So hence this effect came in. Or like this. Because that's one of those Radio 1, 1, 1 kind of sound effects, isn't it? Uh, the, the kind of vocoder kind of uh, voice box sound, uh, computer electronic, whatever you want to call it. And... Uh, as many of you uh, who are regular to this channel will know, uh, my go-to go -to, uh, effect for this is the isotope vocal synth. I cannot rave about this plugin enough. Yes, it is worth paying for, however much it costs. I think I've actually got a short link to it. Uh, it, by the way, is not an affiliate link. I don't have an affiliate relationship with isotope, uh, but I do know the team there, and I know they're good people. Um... Uh, let's see, vocal synth maybe something like that. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's got to be in there as vocal synth. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, maybe I don't have a link to it. Anyway, if you just look up Isotope vocal synth, have a search for that and head over. Uh, you're going to like it because you can do so much with it. So over here, I've run up some vocoder, the classic barns there. Uh, shifting, shifting up, I can shift higher. Or like this. And get something like that, or I can shift lower and get something like this. Or like this. Uh, and you can go from vintage to hard or to smooth. Like, and that sounds like this. So you're getting that classic kind of uh, vocoder effect. So that's what I did there. Bit of vocal synth. And, of course, I was placing that first in the chain. Uh, and I'm trying to remember who it was asking me yesterday. It might have been Louis Riviera. Uh, and he said, Mike, is there any importance as to where you place all of these effects in your effects rack chain? Absolutely. Just imagine, like, um, if you had, like, physical uh, processor units, like in the olden days, where we had a Behringer reverb box and a Behringer flange box and all of that. I remember my days in radio where I had a Behringer with all those funky lights. And um, yeah, absolutely. It's like daisy chaining from one to the next to the next. Uh, so if you put the vocal synth at the end, I'll show you what happens. Let's put it at the end and have a listen. So that's the vocal synth at the end. This is the vocal synth at the top. So as you can hear, it pops when it's at the top, but when it's at the bottom, it doesn't. Why? Because when it's at the top, it's going through the de it's going through the scientific filter, it's going through compression, it's going through hard limiting, it's going through parametric equalizer. Let me uh, zoom and show you uh, the effect I've got set on that vocal synth so you can have a look for yourself. It kind of looks like that. And then some de is going on here in the frequencies of uh, 3K up to 6K. We've got scientific filter, which is rolling off again any bass rumble. Bit of dynamics processing there uh, with a tiny bit of gating going on. Speech volume leveler, hard limiting to crush it down. And finally, parametric EQ will just make it sound rather good and rather nice and rather funky indeed. Coming up to your comments again in one minute, we'll also plug that community. Uh, my aim with the community is to essentially uh, grow that baby out, and I'm only going to do that uh, with your help. Uh, so by sharing it with anyone you think would be interested, uh, we can have a great little community in there and, and share tips. So that's the vocal synth. Over here, what did I do here? Let's have a listen. Maybe like this. Now this is quite a cool effect because I went for what did I go for? I had some flanger and some extra scientific filter in here. Uh, and again, I was putting them at the start of the chain. So the flanger is kind of a st standard oral flanger. Flanging is where the voice kind of goes around your head, like left to right and out of phase and that kind of stuff. I can maybe show you if I bring up a window. Let's have a look for um, phase analysis and phase meter. Let's bring those meters up. Uh, phase meter and you can maybe have a, a little look at what's going on with the flancher. Let's make that let's make that bigger. Can I pop that? Let's pop that down there. Ooh, that looks nice. Let's just do something like this. Oh hang on. I'm putting it in the wrong place. Because that's uh that's by your comments, isn't it? So hang on. Let's do this and this and then we'll pop essential sound, undock that and pop that back in over there. 
So now you should be able to see everything that I would like to show to you. So we've got this and this. Pop that down there. And let's have a look at what happens when I play that. Maybe like this. So as you can see, maybe like this. The phase meter is going off the scale up there. Maybe like this. And you can see lovely kind of, actually let me show you how it looks for all those vocal effects that I've done so far. Like this. Or like this. Maybe like this. Didn't it go funny on the robotic voice? Have a look. Like, like this. Or like this. Maybe like this. And the reason for that, I've just realized why it went funny, is because the uh, robotic voice is mono. Now, I'm curious, did I create a mono track there? I don't think I did, because that's stereo. So that has to be a mono effect, which is interesting. Like, like this? So that's what a, a stereo effect looks like. Nice kind of a wobbly pattern around left, right, inverse, and mono. Uh, but when you have something that is in uh, mono, you can tell. Like this. Because it points straight up at mono there. Uh, so very interesting stuff. Right, we're past halfway through now. Uh, let's take a look at some of your comments that are coming in to the show live. And I always like to take a little sip here. Mm. By the way, I really, 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 really appreciate uh, super chats like that one. Like, whoa, that one there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Simon RDF, uh, and also had a super chat from Lee Johnson during the show. Uh, great way to support the show at youtube.com slash music radio creative. Uh, what else have we got? Mark Bellinger, uh, what filters would you use for booming voice film trailer style? Ooh, a good question. What filters would I use? Definitely different filters than I would use for radio imaging. Uh, good question. I think I'm going to need to think about that one, Mark. Mark, I don't know if you're a member of the community yet, but would you, uh, would you mind posting that over in the community so I can consider it and maybe others can consider it and we can, uh, we can work on that one? Maybe, maybe actually uh, there'll be a live stream about that because there's, there's a lot I could do on that. And that's the good thing about posting in the community is I, I will be turning a lot of your questions into live streams. Cato, thanks for the, uh, the, the comment there, supporting the super chat. Uh, and always, always posting uh, jokes in the in the chat. Keno, I love your jokes. I don't always read them out because sometimes uh, sometimes they frighten me. Uh, like uh, you know, I used to work in radio, and I'm just scared to the back teeth of libeling someone. And I know sometimes your jokes come close to the line, so I appreciate them, and the others do in the chat, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> but I won't always read them out on the fly because uh, you can get into a lot of trouble, can't you? Um, always loving your live, says PSS Santush. Uh, I'm still using the old interface you've replaced. I should replace mine. Firewire is funky. It is funky, Don. It is funky. I don't know what's up with Firewire. Uh, Apple have totally dropped it now. They're into Thunderbolt now. And, uh, you know, Focusrite are good. I love Focusrite. Like I say, I'm using the Scarlett 2i2. They make solid audio interfaces, uh, probably the best audio interfaces I've used. Uh, the 2i2 is fantastic. Uh, if you're a voiceover artist, the 2i2 is rugged. I wish I could show you but it's, uh, it's plugged in at the moment, so I don't want to unpatch it at the moment. But it's, um, it's Scarlet. It's, it's a red color. And it's that thing. You can, you can whack it. You can bring it with you on the road if you're a voice artist and you can do your stuff on the road. So really good. And they've got a new set of stuff. Uh, let me see if I can find it for you and get it on the screen because um, I, I can't really remember what the name of it is. I think it's the Claret range of, uh, of Focusrite gear. Let's just go over here and you can have a look. Uh, Focusrite Claret, if you're on uh, Mac, you're going to love this. Uh, these are not cheap, uh, but they are good. And their starter one is the uh, this one here. It's the Claret 2 Pre, better, faster, easier, 10 times for Thunderbolt interface. Uh, so it looks virtually exactly the same as a Scarlet 2i2. Um, it's, you know, it's got the input. I don't think, has it got, no, it hasn't got pad buttons. Oh, so you might run against the same problem of having hot audio if you're not miking. So if you're using line ins, like when I was Googling around, I found like people playing electric guitars, plugging them in. They were having to turn the game right down. And even so, they were distorting like I've had the problem with. So um, there you go. Uh, but the 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 four pre, uh, does that have a pad button? No, maybe it doesn't suffer the problem of hot audio. I don't know. Uh, it's a much newer model. And uh, yeah, these are these are Thunderbolt interfaces. Wow, which is so cool. And I mean, if you think about it, I, I've seen um, comparisons. USB 1.1, forget it. If you see an audio interface or a mixing desk with a USB 1.1 uh, 
uh, connector. Run a mile, run for the hills. Uh, don't order it, don't use it, don't get it. There were some really good ones from Elisis. Sorry, my, my headphone wire is going everywhere today. Uh, but I couldn't go with Elisis because they were 1.1s. USB 2 is good, that's what I'm using right now. USB 3 is overkill, and I don't really find many USB 3s around. Uh, Firewire is kind of comparable, I think, between USB 2 and 3. And Thunderbolt was just like way up. It's way up the top uh, for kind of uh, latency. So I'd be interested if anyone's tried one of these Thunderbolt interfaces, what's the latency on it? I know Caddo was asking me what's the latency on my Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK. I did have a brief play with it, and I think I got a result of around 26 milliseconds. So I wonder if that's, that's good or bad. It seems okay to me. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, lots of good questions coming in. Uh, thank you, Robert Red from Arkansas. Earl, hey, started doing my live streams like you. Great presentations. Yeah, I, en I enjoy doing them. It's really good fun. Hey, A's Music, can you make a tutorial about robot voices but without affecting the pitch of the voice, only changing the characteristics? Sure, another good one to share over in the community at community.musicradiocreative.com. You can see there's four new topics uh, since I've been on in the last half hour. Uh, so a great place to post. We've got a pitch shifting question here. Uh, what happened to templates on aud audition? What filters do you use for film trailer? Oh, so I see that's been posted. Uh, fantastic. And we'll, uh, we'll get to those in the community. Luis Riviera, Mike, is it me or is your mic slightly hot? Hopefully it is better now. Hopefully sounding better. Isabella's getting used to the beard. Right, let's get back to some more audio fun now in Adobe Audition. So we've seen on this third voice here, I'm using scientific filter to whack off 250. I could probably go up to even 400. Maybe like this. And get a real kind of trebly image sound uh, with some flanging, which uh, again, if I, I change this around. Maybe like this. You can hear the difference here, final delay time. Maybe like this. Change the stereo phasing, make it really stereo. Maybe like this. Modulation rate. Maybe like this. Kind of alien style. Oh, I did do a really cool thing. Uh, actually, something I will I will let you in on here on the live stream. I've done a bunch of tutorials for Mike Russell VIP on the Doppler shifter. And I wanted to show you uh, a cool thing you can do with the Doppler shifter. Um, because this is an underused effect, I think, in Adobe Audition. Let's just try and grab that time selection out, if I can. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Everything's running slow today. I must be using a lot of CPU power. We'll just have to uh, wait with it. Here we go, right. Maybe like this. I don't know how well this will work on a voiceover, but uh, let's have a look. Do you know what? I've got a problem with my effects bus here. Can you guys hear that? Yeah, it's peaking like hell. How do I stop this? Hang on. Let's put it back to reverb effect. Ah. Yeah, because I could hear some clicking in my headphones, and it was actually because I had uh, eternal feedback on my effects bus. I was getting some kind of feedback loop, so hopefully that's better for you. That might cure the mic hotness, by the way, as well. Um, right, yeah, I was going to use uh, Doppler Shifter, which is in the special in effects. Maybe like this. Kind of whirl stuff around your head. Um, but I did find something I quite liked. Radius 4000. Uh, velocity, we're going to take up a little bit. Starting angle, that's okay there. Uh, center front's going to be about 1000. And um, let's see. Was I going to do any more? Yeah, I was going to make that a bit more. Maybe 600 here. Uh, oh, how high can we go with velocity? Is that the highest? Oh, there. I want a path type like that. That's what I want. Right, now let's see what we can do here. Um, how can I make this larger, I wonder? There was a way to make it larger. Let's go back to default. Start from the default. That's a bit better. Right, 4,000 starting distance. Uh, then 1,000 over here. Um, hmm. And uh, maybe we need to go for a little preset here. Let's go for this one. Jet. Oh, I know why it's not doing it. Um, I need to loop this up a little bit to show you the effect I'm trying to achieve. So paste this in a few times. So this is a really cool effect. Uh, the underused Doppler shifter. Someone was asking about a stutter effect. Um, let's do 16 seconds of audio to make it long enough. Um, and then we'll go into effects and special. 
Doppler shifter right there. And back to default, so we set it back to our defaults, 4,000, um, 1,000. Crank the velocity up like that, and we get something. Maybe like this. 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 <laughs> so I know the Doppler shifter is, is generally designed for... Um, creating uh, sound effects like jets taking off and ambulances whooshing by and, uh, you know, that kind of left-to-right stereo spatial sound. But... Uh, Maybe like this. Maybe like this. Maybe like this. When I was fiddling about with it, I just thought, yeah, that's something else you can do with a Doppler shifter. So uh, just another cool, cool effect for you today. Uh, what else have we got here? Like a robot. Oh, so like a robot, I went really simple with this. Um, and I added some chorus in. And I think what I did was just uh, whack up the delay rate to 2.1 hertz. Like a robot. So 0 0.1 hertz, that's your kind of... Like a robot. Uh, Non-pitched uh, robot, uh, almost like you're in the shower. And the further you go up, 5.5 .5 hertz. Like a robot. You start to go more alien. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing good, John, on Facebook Live. Nice to see you there, John. Always appreciate a comment on the Facebook Live stream. Uh, very nice to see you there, indeed. We'll get back to the comments in four minutes. And then we've got this one. Or like a scary dog demon. So what's going on here? Well, bags, bags and bags of reverb. Bags and bags of it, because I like reverb. And also, it's scary. Um, so what I did was um, I did the pitch shifter and I went down minus three semitones on one channel and I panned it over hard to the left and then here I did a pitch shifter and I went down minus eight semitones and I panned it hard to the right so you get that nice stereo effect like this. Or like a scary dog demon. On solo now you should hear this in stereo if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. Or like a scary dog demon. So that one is, is kind of close to my normal pitch, and then this one is pitched right down. Or like a scary dog demon. Combine them together, you get this. Or like a scary dog demon. All of this is possible. Just hit subscribe right now. Maybe you'd like to make a jingle that sounds like this. So, uh, and I apologize for, there's just a tiny bit of clicking as I play back. That's uh, not a fault in the session. That's uh, just the CPU uh, trying to keep up with everything while I live stream today. Uh, so, uh, with the jingle, I had to really improvise here because uh, let's just get rid of all those sound effects here and then I'll show you what I was up to down here and um, play back my original voice here. So, I had this. this playing the best music. Live from the top of the tower. 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 It's all possible. So I wanted to kind of sync that up nicely so it would roll nicely into my it's all possible bit. Uh, and what I did down here was I tried my best to layer in sound effects where I could. So first of all, I did a, a boom riser like this. So an impact, boom. And then it started rising. And the riser was when I went tower, 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 until it stops like that. So that's the first layer of the uh, the imaging there. And then I added in some wipes, and they sound a little bit like this and this. And that just kind of did a nice transition between, well, you'll hear it if I, uh, if I introduce everything now into the mix. This, playing the best music from the top of the tower. tower. And uh, yeah, so that, that's all sounded good. What I did with the live there is I used some of the existing effects that I had and I layered them up. So uh, to solo this channel, I popped this one in. That's my isotope vocal synth. And then I popped in this sound. And, uh, but that wasn't as modulated as it is now. Hang on, let me uh, ooh, take down the, uh, the delay rate there a little bit. And then finally, I layered it up with this. Uh, that was, I think that was my, my demon voice. Uh, so you kind of had three vocal effects going on. Live. So you had that one and you had... Live. That one, and they're all together. And then top of the tower, 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 I did a nice automation here uh, by going in on this track. And I had... Some pitch shifting, I think. Did I have some pitch shifting? What is this going on here? 
Yes, pitch. Pitch shifter transpose ratio. And I transposed up. So I get tower, 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 like that. So let's have a tower, 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 tower. It's all possible. Now, of course, if I put this uh, the inverse direction, it would go down like this. The tower, 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 tower. It's all possible. So it's really what your preference is. I mean, both sound good in imaging. That's what I decided to go for. Then a bit of dry speaking from me. It's all possible. Or perhaps a sung jingle that sounds like this. Music radio creative. There's Kim, fantastic singer, and uh, popped in that little a cappella there. Um, now I was hoping to get in. Again, I was kind of guesstimating when I did the, the trailer. I wanted to do it all in one take. Um, and I, I was hoping, hoping, hoping to, to get the full URL in there. Music Radio Creative. But there just wasn't enough time. So I thought, well, OK, Music Radio Creative will be enough. What I could do, if I wanted to, I could time stretch it, but it would probably sound a bit off. Music Radio Creative That's possible. I mean, yeah, you could, but it's a bit of a rush, and I didn't want the trailer to be that rushed. So um, another trick you can do when you uh, time stretch like that in the multi-track, very, very important thing I always recommend doing is going into Properties and selecting your mode from real time and switching it over to Rendered because then you'll get a better quality time stretch. As you can see, it takes longer to render out there, uh, but now this should sound better. Yes. Music Radio Creative that's possible too. And that actually doesn't sound too bad, so maybe I could have done that. I don't know. Uh, right, we've got crikey, time is really flying by today. Uh, I was hoping to show you some Photoshop, so let's get back into some comments now, uh, and we'll take a look over at the community too uh, before hopping into the final section. You can join the community over at this URL. It is mrc.fm slash community. That's mrc.fm slash community. Don't always get the chance to mention every single comment in the show, uh, but I really appreciate them. And the best place to make your comment live forever is over at mrc.fm mrc.fm slash community. Again, in the last 15 minutes, four new or updated topics. Uh, we got uh, Caddo there with some useful show links. Thank you for that, Caddo. Appreciate that. Uh, we have got how to perform the stutter effect. That's one I commented on earlier on. Uh, filters for a booming voice. Uh, pitch shifting, male to female. Awesome, awesome. Keep those comments coming in. Keep joining in. And by the way, the, the more you interact... Uh, I believe it's a very clever algorithm. Uh, if you click into users, everyone can see this, by the way. Uh, you get a nice uh, list. I don't think this updates in real time, so you might have to come back tomorrow. And you can see uh, how you're doing on the interaction scale in the community. Uh, and like I say, Joe is uh, at number one at the moment. Uh, but that will update. I don't know, maybe it updates every day. Uh, so we'll have to check that out. But uh, I just appreciate you being there. A few more comments before we get back to it then. What have we got here? Um, let's have a look here. The 2i2 is a lovely interface. Got one myself. It's brilliant, isn't it? Really good. David Lewis, love my Scarlet 2i2. Do I use their plugins? No, no, I don't know if they're any good. Um, when I had the Focusrite Sapphire Pro 14, I didn't like their Sapphire mix control, uh, their virtual mixing desk. I just didn't like it. Uh, I, I, and that, hence why I've bought myself an analog mixing desk. Uh, cause I, I just don't like, maybe it's just a thing with me. I just don't like mixing, uh, on the screen. Uh, I prefer to have physical faders in front of me. Uh, Anthony Hall, Mike, what are your thoughts between the Claret units and Apollo Twin MK2 Quad? I hear Apollo make good quality stuff, um, but I don't know. I'm a fan of Focusrite, so that's my opinion there. Uh, hey, I'm Tom Hall. Walter, are the Focusrite boxes good for PC? I believe so, yep. Uh, love the trailer. Thanks, Don. Bojan, uh, thank you for your comment there. Really appreciate that. Uh, what else have we got here? Joe, have a request. Not sure if it's possible. After you live stream, can you tag your vids with keywords for searching effects later? You've done some stuff in the past. I can't find any more. Wow, that's good. Yeah, I mean, uh, if any of you in the community are able to help by posting up links, I think the community would be a great place to do that. If we could all kind of chip together, I see Caddo's taking the initiative there and started posting links uh, based on the, the shows I do. That would be appreciated because community is kind of a place where things live forever. So if we could move that over there, that's that's a good idea, Joe. And, and Caddo, thank you. Uh, I have a black belt in karaoke. Yes, I do. I'm a great singer. Actually, I did use to sing karaoke. And I got rounds of a booze, rounds of booze. Yeah. Mm. Um, thank you, everyone, for the lovely comments and Isabella for for chipping in there. Let's get into the last 10 minutes of the show now. Um, so, yeah, just wrapping up here, really. The last thing I did uh, was insert a bell, which uh, is a lovely uh, sound effect that we got in our library. 
sounds like that. And I just thought it'd be nice to say, click the bell to get updates. Over in Premiere Pro, we, oh, that's a funny face, isn't it? That's an even funnier face. Uh, you always make funny faces, don't you, when you're in, uh, here? And, uh, oh, by the way, something else I should show you, if I can uh, maybe, uh, let's see if I can pop out, not the effects one, but the uh, Lumetri Color. Uh, let's just pop that over here for a moment. The Lumetri Color is something that I used. Um, they come with some wonderful presets that you can roll through. So what you might have noticed if you looked at the thumbnail carefully for this live stream, you notice that the, the picture of me kind of hovering over the picture of me on the thumbnail, uh, I was a little less processed. That's because I used a lovely Lumetri effect in Premiere Pro. This was the SL Clean Fuji A HDR, and this can kind of tart up your visual appeal. Uh, so if we go here to None, you'll see how I suddenly go a little redder. Uh, and yeah, my lighting isn't really the best actually in this studio. I do need to make it better. I'm not a lighting expert. If anyone knows anything about lighting and can help me, I appreciate that. SL Big adds a, a different tint. So just find your tint. Blue Intense, there you go. Uh, I go rather pale there. Uh, cross LDR, you see. You can get that cinematic effect, whatever you're looking for. But I find some of these lumetri effects, uh, you can actually rifle through them much quicker by clicking this arrow over here. You can rifle through until you find the effect that you like. And as you can see, as I'm clicking through, it's kind of changing. I can go for a monochrome look if I want. That looks quite nice. Oh, now I'm going back until I find an effect that I like that kind of suits my face and doesn't make me look too like Donald Trump. Yeah, so Lumetri effects if you want to process your trailer. I wouldn't do this on every video I produce, just the trailer, because I think I want a cinematic look. Uh, so that is what I've gone for there. And then over in Photoshop, I created a thumbnail, as you can see here. Uh, this is where, and again, I'm going to pop this out so you can see it. Uh, let's pop it over here. This is where libraries come in really handy here uh, with the Adobe Creative Cloud. So I've created a library of colors, a library of color themes, a library of character styles, and a library of graphics. So how do these work? Well, um, colors are linked to Adobe Color. Uh, so that is a website. Um, and let's have a look for it. I think it's, uh, it used to be known as Cooler, uh, but now they've renamed it to Color. Uh, the spelt the American way, C O L O R dot Adobe dot com, and you can create uh, a ton of your own um, preset uh, boards here uh, with hex codes for your corporate colors. So I can like pop in text. So if I wanted to quickly paste some text over here, like I did for the thumbnail, I think I put something like learn audio production, learn audio audio production and then I want our corporate typeface I can select that all and click here character styles and immediately it should it should pop and uh, give me I think I've already got work sans that's why it hasn't changed anything but it would uh, change it to bold or uh, change it to thin whatever I want then I can go for a, a, a corporate color here so um, let's place that and change it so I can change the colors here uh, and having a library to hand is really good for, so I'm going to go for the corporate white, which is not quite white, it's F7, F8, F9 hex code, so just off white, and then, yeah, so I can, yeah, here we go, now I can click to the character styles in my library, might want to just increase that a little bit, so 72 is not even going to be enough, let's go for 172, um, and then I can, I can pop in and maybe, oh, no, hang on, that's not the right color, is it? Something like that. I can also drag out the handles like this, make it bigger. That's moving it around. But if we do this, we can make it much bigger, as big as we want, really. Uh, and then if I tick that, I can then double click uh, on the text. Boom, boom, boom. That's it. And maybe drop a shadow as well to make it look nice and blend in. Uh, and then I've got. These uh, vectors here, or SVGs, uh, are just files from Adobe Illustrator that we created. These are our website elements. Like you see this big call to action button. We use these on the Music Radio Creative website. Got here. Now there's probably a way I could get it so I could, um, I could change the text myself as well. But at the moment I haven't done that. So subscribe. Kind of have to do it manually. But that's okay. I uh, just take that, tick that, and then grab the handles there. Just want to make this... A little smaller so it fits with the text like so and 
move that into the middle, doing this very roughly. Obviously, I'd spend more time and give more attention. Uh, change that to our corporate uh, midnight blue color. Let's do that. Let's place it midnight blue. And then I need uh, to create a rectangle underneath. Hang on. That's going all over the place. Let's move the rectangle underneath. The beauty of working in real time here. Uh, needs to go somewhere like that. And then the subscribe should be in midnight blue. So something like that. And then I can move that subscribe button to wherever I want it to be. Uh, beauty about library, I cannot rave enough about the library, is you can bring in your elements. So these are all our, our corporate icons at Music Radio Creative. And I can just drop and place them and resize them. And because they're vector, they resize, uh, you know, however I want them. So uh, Photoshop, uh, that's great. I never thought I'd be covering Photoshop on the live stream, but <laughs> there you go. There are a lot of people out there that know more about Photoshop than I do. Um, but I do use it as part of my process, particularly for creating a YouTube trailer. Uh, so why not give you an example as to how it's working? for me. And then finally, to finish up, when I've got everything, so I've got the audio all looking good, I've mixed in my, my outro there where I can place my call to actions, I would go in and I would uh, render this baby out. Uh, so I would go to File, Export, uh, oh, hang on, I'm selecting everything, let's just select nothing there. File, Export, Media, or just uh, Command M, Control M on the PC. And then there's awesome, awesome preset. I work in 4K now. I don't work in 1080p. Apart from when I'm streaming, because even though we've got a big internet pipe here on the Isle of Wight, I think uh, live streaming in 4K at the moment is a bit of an overkill. So I, the only thing I do in 1080p are my live streams. Everything I upload to the channel goes out in 4K. And they have a nice preset here, YouTube 2160p 4K. And then I can queue it uh, to Adobe Media Encoder or just export it like that. It tells me it's going to be 327 megabytes. And then up it goes uh, to YouTube and then I can place it for new visitors as a trailer on my channel change trailer remove trailer do whatever I want uh, and then you get a nice trailer that looks something Hello, like this. Hello I'm Mike from musicradiocreative.com would you like to make your voice sound like, like this? this or like this maybe like this like a robot or like a scary dark demon all of this is possible just hit subscribe right now maybe you'd like to make a jingle that sounds like this Playing the best music live from the top of the tower. Tower, tower, tower. It's all possible. Or perhaps a sung jingle that sounds like this. Music Radio Creative. That's possible too. Plus, I go live daily, Monday to Friday, with a live stream all about audio production. Join me, hit subscribe, and click the bell to get every update. There you go, and I'll just leave you with a few YouTube hacks before we end this live stream today. Um, a really good plugin, actually, you can see it in use over here, is VidIQ. Uh, you can get it for Chrome, and I really like it because it gives you statistics on how you're performing, your SEO, and everything. Uh, a guess at your monthly revenue, by the way. That's not my monthly revenue, but it's it's guessing. It's trying to do its best at guessing. This comes up for every YouTube channel, not just your own, by the way. It guesses how much a YouTube channel is making every month. Uh, then you've got, obviously, subscribe here. Uh, I like the end screen and annotations. This I really take advantage of this uh, because you can go in and you can place on like a nice subscribe call to action, uh, a video for people to watch, and also a link out. And I link people uh, to the YouTube channel to subscribe. So that's it, making a YouTube trailer. I hope you found it handy. Haven't got time for any more comments today, but I really appreciate them. Uh, go ahead and join the community. I'd really love you to do that at mrc.fm slash community. It's been a lot of posting in there since I've been live. Uh, hit the link if you're not already joined up. Uh, and if you're listening on the replay or on the podcast, mrc.fm slash community. And I'll be back. I'm back every weekday, Monday to Friday from 2 p.m. UK time time with a brand new stream. I'll be back tomorrow and uh, we'll be covering uh, something else really, really exciting. So I hope you can join me live.